had access to, you know, the, the full rosters of everyone working at the NSA, the entire intelligence community, uh, and undercover assets all around the world, uh, the locations of every station uh, we have, what their missions are, and so forth. But I, sitting my desk, uh, certainly had the authorities to, to wiretap anyone from you or your accountant to a federal judge to even the president, if I had a personal email. Well, joining me now is James Woolsey. He's a former director of Central Intelligence and a former vice president and officer of Booz Allen Hamilton. He's currently chairman of the Foundation for Defense of Democracies. Welcome to you, uh, Ambassador. What is your reaction to Edward Snowden's decision to leak this information? I think Mr. Snowden had no right to arrogate to himself the right to decide where to strike the balance between liberty and security. President Obama pointed out a couple of days ago that this balance has to be struck and that uh, the court system, particularly the Foreign Intelligence uh, Surveillance Act court, uh, the executive branch, the president, attorney general, uh, uh, and uh, the Congress, uh, with the reviews by the congressional committees involved uh, every few months. Uh, this has been a very precisely crafted system for making the decision about where to strike the balance between uh, uh, liberty uh, and security. And Snowden arrogated that entire decision to himself. So he decided that it was him who got to strike that balance, not the elected representatives that we vote for, not the president, uh, not the courts. And I think uh, for arrogance uh, and uh, uh, improper behavior, the arrogating to yourself that kind of power uh, when you're supposed to be taking care of your duties in the intelligence community is uh, stunningly wrong and uh, since he's confessed to the crime I hope that uh, when we are able to uh, uh, take him into custody uh, he's uh, locked up for the rest of his life. Snowden has made it easier for them to to kill Americans and others. But isn't the reality that if you're in Al-Qaeda of course you imagine that the American intelligence agencies are probably trying to check your email or your internet traffic or your cell phones. I mean, I've watched dramas on TV for years where this exact thing is done. It's not a trade secret. What is concerning many Americans is the sheer quantity of private data that appears to, being, to be being amassed by the government without anyone outside of a few select people in the judiciary, the executive uh, and Congress knowing about it. And it may be a symptom of modern times, but you know, I feel uncomfortable that people well, I, I don't know know everything about my uh, online activity. Why should they? I want to bring in now a man who says that Edward Snowden has done, and I quote, a great service to the American people by exposing the truth about what our government's doing in secret. Ron Paul is a former congressman and former presidential candidate. He's now chairman of the Campaign for Liberty. Ron Paul, uh, thank you for joining me. Um, you are a supporter of Edward Snowden and his actions. Why? Well, from what I hear and what he's done, I mean, he's done a great service because uh, he's, t he's telling the truth. And this is what we are starved for. The American people are starved for the truth. And when you have a dictatorship or an authoritarian government, truth uh, becomes treasonous. And this is what they do. If you are a whistleblower or if you're trying to tell the American people that our country is destroying our rule of law and destroying our constitution, uh, they say, they turn it on, they say, oh, we're co you're committing treason. So this is, this is a big problem. And to expect any changes without an announcement like this, things keep getting worse. They've gotten worse steadily for the past 10 years. So essentially there is no Fourth Amendment anymore. And for somebody to tell the American people the truth is a heroic effort. And he knows that it's very risky. He knows he's committing, uh, you know, civil disobedience, and he knows that he could get punished. But he believes very sincerely, I'm sure, I've never met the man, but he believes severe, uh, uh, very seriously that what our government is doing to us is so serious that somebody has to speak out. And I think the large majority of American people are sick and tired of hearing how many people or having surveillance on them, whether it's their phones, their internet, and email, and everything else. Matter of fact, I think uh, I think the president ought to send him a thank you letter because the uh, tra the president ran on transparency, and we're getting a lot of transparency now. So and finally, we're getting the president to fulfill his promise about transparency. So that's pretty exciting for me <laughs> because I believe in transparency. But we have our government turn we have our government turned on his head. 
The government is supposed to be open and we're supposed to have our privacy. But we don't have any privacy and the government's totally secret. And then they combine this with what they do with the IRS. Maybe, maybe that's how they line up their targets in the IRS. They modify, they, you know, they check on our phone calls and find out what kind of business well, deals me... we're doing so we can audit them and do all these kind of things. It's just totally out of control. To remind people, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers and effects against unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause supported by oath or affirmation and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Now, I just don't see how you can say that what is going on here in complete secrecy from 99% of the people it's being done to uh, lives up to the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. It is palpably a breach, isn't it? Well, it depends on whether or not you want to preserve the country's ability to operate in a world of uh, terrorism in which a lot of terrorists are very uh, technically sophisticated. Well, that, yeah, that, if you want to defend respect, the country, you're right. going to have to defend it. Right. And, but I understand that, and there's a lot of sympathy for that from many Americans, but that wasn't the question. The, the question is whether... It is the question. Well, it's not... It is the question. No, the my, balance, my, the, that balance between security and liberty no, is the question. I understand that is your answer. But the question I was putting to you was whether what is going on, given the absolute secrecy with which it has been going on until Edward Snowden revealed this, whether it is actually allowable under the Fourth Amendment of the U.S. Constitution. Where, is the, the, where is the probable cause given for 99.9% of the information being effectively seized here? Given the fact that this system was put together by the people's elected, con uh, elected representatives, that it's been upheld by the courts, that it's monitored by the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, that it's monitored by uh, Attorney General and officials in the executive branch uh, every uh, 90 days, it was one of these 90-day reports uh, that was uh, leaked, and that it is systematically uh, supported by people uh, like the chairman of the Senate Intelligence uh, uh, Committee, Senator Feinstein, uh, I think you would have to say that the government on this subject has done a reasonable job of balancing these two very important interests. If you try to look at liberty without considering security at all, you're putting on blinders. You, you, it really, you can't answer the question just as you couldn't okay. answer it if you just talked uh, about uh, uh, security and not about liberty. They okay. both have to be considered. But you can go to the FISA court and get a warrant. That's ridiculous. That's like the monitoring of the president say, oh, well, we're going to pick and choose who we're going to assassinate, American citizen or not. But we have monitors. We're going to study this. That's the rule of law. What he's doing is repealing the Magna Carta. You can't just do these kind of things. And this one is not only repealing the principles of liberty, but it's, uh, it's destroying the Constitution. So my question should be to all of you who defend this nonsense is, what should the penalty be for the people who destroy the Constitution? They're always worried about how they're going to destroy the American citizens who tell the truth to let us know what's going on. But we ask the question, what is the penalty for the people who deliberately destroy the Constitution and rationalize and say, oh, we have to do it for security? Well, you know what Franklin said about that. You end up losing, you lose your uh, security and you lose your freedoms too. So I think we've embarked on a very, very dangerous course. The American people are with us on this. It's totally out of control. And I would say if you're, if you're confused about what we should do, just read the Constitution. What's wrong with that? Well, you know, that I just, gives I a just pretty did, good guidelines. If you didn't, don't like it, get I, people get people get people to get people to repeal it and change the Constitution, but not just to deny it. I mean we go to war without a declaration. We totally ignore the Constitution. That is what our problem is today. We have no rule of law and people say, Well, just let secret courts do this and the government's to know everything and the American people are to have no privacy. I mean, you're, that, that reflects an intimidation. People are insecure and think that we okay. need more authoritarianism. You're justifying dictatorship is what to, you're doing. I have to leave you there in full flow.